Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how you can transform this whole space into a smart home. You can achieve this with no tools, no coding, in just under 30 minutes. Now this video is going to be really useful for you if you're an absolute beginner and you don't know where to start, but also if you love Zigbee devices and you want to check out a new range. I'll be taking a closer look to the Zigneto range from Ajax Online, which have kindly sponsored this video. Five years ago, it used to be a nightmare to set up a smart home. It was quite difficult but now it's getting better and better. So today we'll be looking at a colored light bulb, a water leak sensor, a security remote control, a Zigbee gateway, PIR motion sensor, a wireless button, a door and window sensor, a vibration sensor, and an indoor siren. I'm gonna show you how you can set this all up, how we can use things like our voice and also automations to control our smart home. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers and let's roll the intro. The absolute first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download an app and with this app we're going to be pairing all the devices and control them and setting up automations. So the app you need to download is a Smart Life app and you can find it on the Android store or the iOS store. Now I mentioned a lot of devices but to get started you don't really actually need all of those devices. You can pick and choose which ones you want to start with but what you do need is a gateway. So the Zigbee gateway is fundamental and this is the brains of all the system. And let me explain to you briefly how this actually works. Now let me show you how this briefly works. We've got the gateway here. This connects to your internet. Then all of your sensors pair to the gateway. And I'll show you how we can do that in a bit. So we have a contact sensor, for example, motion sensor bulb, pairs to the gateway. Then you can access and you can control all the devices thanks to an app that we just downloaded previously. So get your ethernet cable, get your gateway, just plug it in like this and then put this somewhere out of the way. You don't really need access to this. It's got quite good range, but if you can, put it in the middle of the house. This gateway supports around 128 devices, so you've got plenty of space to grow your smart home as you evolve. Now let's jump back into the app. You're gonna go and click on the plus button. You can either go add manually or auto scan, look for the gateway, tap on the gateway and start syncing it up. Now, if the gateway doesn't sync up for any reason, you have a reset button behind it. So you can press the reset button and wait until the, the LEDs flash and just follow through the instruction that you see on the screen and you should very, very easily be able to pair this up. Once you've got the gateway paired up, now you can start adding devices to them. So you're going to need to add these devices one by one. So this is where probably all of the time is gonna be spent. And as I said at the beginning, you could probably get this all up and running in 15 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on how many devices you're actually setting up in one go. But remember, you're only setting up the gateway once and the app only once. So next time you add a device, it will be super fast. To add a sub device, so to add a sensor, go to the gateway, tap on the Zignito gateway, scroll down and go to add sub device. Now we need to reset the device. And this will be slightly different depending on what device you actually have and you need to sync. Let me show you a few examples. Now, let's look at one of these vibration sensors. Now in the box, you should have one of these little pins. Uh, and these are quite common and you could just get any pin. And you'll see there'll be, there's a button. There's a button right there. So just press it in, tap it in, and then you'll see a flashing light. So once you see that flashing light, then you know you're good to go. At this stage, get, your, get the app back up tap on LED already blinking, you would tap it and then we'll go in search mode. Now it should actually go and scan the devices. Now what you can, can do is once this is in search mode, you can try and add maybe a couple at a time. Just bear in mind that if you reset it twice, it will just change the name slightly and add a two on it. But you can go back in the app and rename the device to whatever you want. Let me show you actually a slightly different one with the water sensor. Um, it actually has a button because obviously this is uh, water resistant. So what you don't want to do is have a hole in it. So for this example, you have actually a button and by pressing the button, you achieve the same effect as with the little pin. A slightly different one also is the uh, alarm. You're going to need to power this up with some, um, which is a USB basically adapter. And you're gonna to need to turn it on and you have a reset button over here. On the ceiling, you can see the LED colored bulb and to sync this device up, you just need to uh, screw it in, and basically, or screw it in on depending on what type of fitting you have, and then you'll turn on the uh, light at the light switch, and it will start blinking for four or five seconds. So 
be ready at that time to have your app ready to sync. So what you can actually do with these sensors and how you can actually combine them together. Now the power with smart home is having multiple devices. Having just one device is a great starting point. But when you start combining capabilities of other sensors together, you start creating more powerful and more powerful actions. Now I would personally start with a light bulb. Now light bulb is very simple and it gives you great effects, especially with the colored light bulb. So that's a big difference from using a normal white bulb. With these colored light bulbs, you can then turn it on with your phone, setting a simple automation. For example, when it's sunrise or sunset, you can trigger the light to change status. But to give it a bit more use, you can actually start getting more sensors in. So with this button here, so this is wireless, so you can put this wherever you want. So I could have this here, here for example. I could have it anywhere I wanted, close to my sofa, close to my bed, anywhere you want. And what you can do is you, can, you have three settings with this. You have a short tap, a double tap, and a long tap. And depending on that, you can program it. So for example, one tap, turn the light off, two light taps, turn them back on, three taps, I don't know, turn everything off. One of my favorite devices always is always motion sensors and you can see it triggering off as I've actually picked it up. So it actually, I've set it up in that way so it triggers and, and it gives me alerts when someone tries to actually move it, which is sort of like a tampering feature. So this motion sensor over here, he comes with a stand and you can position this wherever you want in a room. Now, there are two, re two ways of doing this. If you position it somewhere where you want it to pick up motion, but be aware that it, you could have a hallway and you might trigger the motion when you don't want it to. Why is this uh, useful? You can turn on the light with motion and here this is, becomes really, really useful. This is a really good scenario, for example, for hallways, which they just turn on and turn off uh, only when there's motion. Not really great for living room, for example, but you could still use it there. So this is a contact sensor and it's based on two components, the little component and the big component. Now, if you see carefully, there's a lip stripe and that's where the magnetic sensor is. So every time these go apart, this one actually trigger, uh, can trigger an automation. And every time they close, the status will change from closed to open. So here again, this is another example of what you can use this for. You can put these anywhere you want. So let's say you want to put them on a door, like I've got behind me. You can also put these on the shutters, for example. So as soon as these shutters close in the evening, then that means that the lights can turn on or other automations can happen. So you can do that too. You can also, for example, put this on a drawer, something that you don't want people maybe to touch and open. You want to know when it was open and you can track other things like that. Now, a vibration sensor like this one here can be quite useful for a few scenarios and let me go through them in detail. So imagine you had a situation where you had an object, like maybe something like this or, a va or something that you could put this actually inside and you wanted to know if someone's actually picking an object up. Now, this is a really good example of a vibration. A vibration will happen when someone picks up an ob object, puts an object down or knocks. So you could have this on the door. So in case someone's knocking on a door, you can have this also on a window. In the, in the unfortunate example, someone smashing the window and you get notified through a vibration sensor. There are a few scenarios. You can also put them behind a, a painting or whatever you have in your home that you want to sort of protect. In terms of actually protecting your home, it's not just about people breaking your window, it's also about water. And water can do a lot of damage. And this water sensor over here works with these probes that you can probably see right there. And those probes sense water, as soon as they sense water, it will go into that sort of state and then could send you a notification. Now you could put this, for example, under your radiator, boiler or anything that could leak under a tap. Now these two I'm quite keen on actually exploring and taking a more of a closer look to. So this is an indoor siren. This comes around 40 pounds on the website, um, which I'm gonna link in the description down below, which I think is really, really good value. And the reason why I say this is that this is an, uh, can actually act as a, a really a deterrent against you know, situations like someone breaking in your home. Because this will sound around 85 uh, decibels. Now I can't really let you uh, hear that because I've got people sleeping around. But you can well imagine how loud that is. And you have this like, little remote control that you can actually get uh, in addition. You, don't, you can get these separately. And this gives you a little SOS button. Uh, I think you can see that, right? 
and you can arm, uh, arm away and arm off. And this, I think this is great because uh, this is for really people that don't really have smartphones on them, not necessarily um, need them. And they can just trigger this with a button and have it put in their pocket and off they go, come back home, boom, disarm again. Also the SOS is quite good in terms of people falling down, the elderly. Now, if you're getting value out of this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing to Smart Home Makers. Now in this part of the video, we're gonna look at voice assistants. We're gonna start off with Google first. We're gonna jump into the Google Home app. We're gonna look at how we can set this up and how we can command and use our voice, for example, to control our light bulb. And let's get going. Okay, so I'm in the Google app. Let's click that plus sign. Click set up a device. Tap on work with Google. Now search for Smart Life. Tap on Smart Life. Now we're going to need to put our mobile phone or email address that we use to register and also our password. Now tap on Authorize. And we're back on the Google screen so we can actually see if things have been working or not. Nice, so you can see the devices are pulling through, smart light, uh, door sensor, indoor siren, the remote, vibration sensor, water leak sensor, and the gateway itself. Let me start with the smart light. Go next, I'm gonna add it to home. Where is this device? Inspiration room. So it seems like you're gonna need to do one by one. Might be a fast way of doing it. So let me know in the comment section down below. So you can see smart lighting here on and off. So if I go off, they should turn off. So let me, let me move this up so you can see. All right, there you go. Turn smart lighting on. Sure, turning on smart lighting. Turn smart lighting off. Okay, turning off smart lighting. Turn smart lighting green. All right, changing smart lighting to green. Turn smart lighting off. All right, turning off smart lighting. Okay, so Google is sorted. Let's go to the next one. Now if you're interested to learn a lot about smart homes and join the Smart Home Makers membership, there's gonna be a link in the description down below. That's where you can get full access to all of my courses. You can cancel at any time and you've got a five day free trial. Courses that are included are like build a smart home, dashboards in home assistant, automations in home assistant, and a few more that I'm planning for later on in the year. Now let's set up our last voice assistant, Amazon's one. And back on the app, click on me. There's actually an easier way to pair to third party devices, for example, like Google or Amazon or smart things. So let's tap on Alexa and let's sign in with Amazon. Now it jumps right back in the app. It says link smart life with, you know, A. Uh, so link in it. Now it should go through uh, an authentication. So it, my one's already linked. So that's all good. So now I can control the devices. I have a few suggestions here of what can I do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do try and do the same thing I did with uh, Google's device and see if we get the same result. Turn smart lighting off. Okay. Turn smart lighting on. Okay. Turn smart lighting purple. Okay. Turn smart lighting blue. Okay. Turn smart lighting off. Okay. So we managed to configure these devices, pair them up with the gateway, connect them to our voice assistant of choice. Now at the moment, it's not easy to connect to HomeKit if you're an Apple user. And in the future, I might actually look into doing that and see how that can be done. I'll also be looking at how we can connect these devices into my smart home platform of choice, Home Assistant. So if you want to spread the word, hit that like button so more people can actually find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more about these devices. And I'm going to leave you with a playlist with some automation ideas of things they can actually accomplish with these Zigbee devices. This was Gio from Smart Home Makers. I hope you stay all safe and I'll see you in the next one.